I'll read um, an excerpt from the piece that I wrote for this show. Three, a northern Vietnamese boy migrated to Da Nang during the Vietnam War at the age of 12. He lived under a tent near, next to a lake that stood near the Air Force Base. In the murky water, he learned to harvest lotus flowers. Dozens of young girls came by at dawn to pick a basket of flowers that they sold to people at temples who placed them on growing family altars. At age 16, he met his wife who liked to catch catfish from the lake and fry it along with water spinach. How lucky everyone felt to live near a lake that blessed them with an abundance of fish and flowers. At age 55, the man watched foreigners build a, a wall around the lake. The local government began to put signs around forbidding fishing and harvesting of lotus flowers from the lake. When he asked an American what was happening to his beloved lake, the man looked at him with pity and gave him a Vietnamese language pamphlet entitled Agent Orange. Days later, he was given a free meal and 20 U.S. dollars and then taken to a lab where foreigners pricked him with needles and put him through scans. The next morning, his picture was on the front cover of the local newspaper for setting the record as the man with the highest concentration of dioxin in the Vietnam. Um, next, I'll read from my book, Same Same, which comes out next month. And I'm going to read from the chapter called Returning Home. Where my mother calls home, one can hear the children laughing in a distant schoolyard, scooters honking on bumpy roads, and cicadas chirping at dawn. Bamboo grows freely next to swaying palm trees and grazing water buffalo. The air feels pure in her ancient town tucked between Hue and Hanoi. The houses are aged by the unforgiven heat and monsoon rain. Bundles of incense burn from altars that dominate family rooms and portraits of the dead watch over those who are still living. The first night's dinner was festive with all of mom's five siblings and their children, sharing a feast of fried fish, water spinach soup, caramelized prawns, and big bottles of beer. We sat on a bamboo floor mat, either kneeling or squatting, with our porcelain bowls and chopsticks. The cups and bowls were aged and chipped, but no one seemed to mind. Bango and my grandmother didn't believe in throwing anything away and refused mom's offer to buy a new set of dinnerware. I noticed that Bango and my grandma, grandfather didn't speak much during dinner and instead smiled while watching mom catch up with everyone. The refrigerator, flat screen, TV, scooters, and vitamins locked in the cabinet were all made possible by mom. It's true, as my cousins and my youngest aunt enjoyed a modern Vietnam, earning college degrees and getting corporate jobs. Mom worked six days a week at the nail salon in San Francisco. For more than 30 years, she sent any extra money back home to Vietnam to help pay for weddings, school uniforms, medicine, and throw extras from my grandparents. Sorry, it was my first time reading this out loud. <clears throat> for decades, I'm why I woke up at four in the morning to bike to the beach and enjoy a morning swim. Like other Vietnamese, he came early to Kudai Beach to relax in the still water and cool air. Since his last stroke, Amoy um, didn't go to the beach anymore. But when I woke up at the same time to walk to the bakery and buy 15 mini baguettes. Even at age 70, there was nothing that held her back from working in the heat. The French baguette provided income for my grandmother as she stuffed them with jambon pickled carrots and jicama to make the famous fun meat tip that Vietnam is, named, is known for. For locals, I sell fun meat for 20 dam and 50 dam for foreigners. My grandmother smiled as she told me about the pricing. Her teeth were stained red from the beetle nut she chewed twice a day. She never dressed up, instead she wore a cotton tank top and matching pants with brown plastic slippers that were faded and cropped. At the marketplace, Bug White hit her old age with the conical hat, making her blend in with all the other marketplace women. I distinguished her by her smile, fat cigarette, and squat. Those foreign photographers take my picture all the time, she told me once as I sat with her at the Riverside Market. Do they give you money or buy a sandwich, at least, I asked. No, they hardly ever say anything to me, she shrugged, still not understanding why photographers were so fascinated with her. Though my brother, who lives in Vietnam, found a postcard of my grandmother in a gift shop in Ho City. He bought the whole stack and brought them to the family. My mom and grandmother were embarrassed and hid them all away. The women in the Hoya and marketplace were tough. Many of them are over the age of 60 but can handle boats and scooters with ease. They can take the heat as they drag loads of tomatoes and dragon fruit on their backs. 
Mago and her marketplace friends have, been, have endured times of famine and floods, but still smile, even though they work harder than the people I know back home. I watched mom prepare blue crab, steamed pork belly, and grilled catfish for my grandparents. The smile on mom's face never disappeared while she was home. The drunk who lives across the street sang loudly every evening. We're poor, we eat vegetables, they're rich, and they eat meat. During our dinners, he purposely screamed profanities while drinking cheap beer on the steps. This neighbor had no relatives in the United States to bring him gifts. I'll stop there and excuse me for being emotional. This is the first time I read this out in public, and I had no idea I'd read off the way. But thanks for listening, and um, enjoy the rest of the show.